Well, we are getting busy this week. We're going to be sanding on the hull. We're going to start laying out some thickened epoxy, filling up all those gaps. We're going to start pre-coating the hull here with some thinned epoxy, laying out the glass, rolling it out, and we'll roll out both sides, wet it out, and in the middle of here, we'll mix some epoxy. When we get done with that, we'll mix some more epoxy, and after we get done with that, we'll mix some epoxy. Um, and while we're waiting on that epoxy, we'll mix some more epoxy. So. But in the end, it was a good day because we wind up really learning how to mix epoxy. No, but in all seriousness, it turned out great. This will be the last time you can see it with it without having glass on it. I'm going to start uh, getting in here. Uh, one of the last things to do is to completely sand the hull, I guess to get all these blemishes and all off. Um, you know, I feel like I've sanded it, but I'm going to take my little orbital sander and I'm going to run over the whole thing kind of pretty quick just to make sure we got a good little base. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make me a bunch of thickened epoxy and fill up all this stuff. And then we're going to start laying glass. I got it all cut. And that's all we're going to be working on next is laying down this glass. It's going to be an all-day project, so I'm ready. Okay, so first and foremost, that whole I'm ready thing, um, I, I would like to retract that if I could, but it, uh, it, it wound up being a long day, and, and I talked about sanding this whole hull, and what I have here is just some 80 grit sandpaper, and I did find some things as I was going over it, and I was trying to be super conscious about how my coverage and, and, and being methodical about how I progressed, you can see that I did the side, I did the bottom, then I come back into the chine on both sides, and I found some little things, a little piece of a thickened epoxy here, a little, uh, you know, blemish or protrusion or something that was a little bit proud there. You know, some of these scarfs and all, I want to make sure that I roughed all of them up real well. But, you know, that sanding part is for me was just something that actually turned out to be a positive thing, and I found a couple things that I would have had to battle while I was laying the glass so it worked out pretty well so here it is I'm just trying to make up start making that thickened epoxy and once again I'm using all US composites products uh, this is their cabasil um, and I mixed up a pretty big batch here although I've got my shirt out my shirt off and the sun's out it's fairly cool uh, I don't know exactly the temperatures I'm gonna say it's in the you know in the mid 50s or something like that uh, but I was able to because I was able to spread that thickened epoxy out in those smaller joints it it didn't kick off on me and I was able to get it all in there and as I was putting that epoxy especially down that center line of that hole I would take that scraper and kind of pack it down in there like that and you can see I'm running through this pretty fast just because uh, as you'll see the theme of the day was this was a really long day and even this part took a lot longer than I expected so after I got all the major gaps filled, I go back and I get my little smaller uh, spatula there or scraper, and uh, I had to had to close the tent because the sun was getting on the, was shining on the hull, and I was worried about it kicking off. But uh, like so, I you know along this center line, I laid thick in the epoxy where that where that peak or that point would be, and so I wanted to have some thick in the epoxy in there. So when I put that first bit of glass in there, that it, it had enough to really adhere to, and it wouldn't be I wouldn't be fighting air gaps or anything like that. And that worked out really well. Uh, and then I come back behind here, and it, on that inside chine there, I put a uh, like a one inch radius, or yeah, about a one inch radius with a little tongue depressor or whatever. I just pulled that in there so as that stuff come down because that bottom glass as you see will actually come out onto that chine and then the sides eventually will overlap and then I made some more thickened epoxy and you know every little screw hole everything because I kind of I kind of feel like I had a little more holes in this boat than it than I should have but I I realized what it was going to take to fill them and I was just committed at this point that I was going to fill all of them. I marked a lot of them. You'll see marks I got everywhere all over the hull. Circles where I put and stuff I wanted to make sure that I addressed. So that's all I was doing there. And I think right here this is where I was putting that little radius on the inside where that chine and all comes down. I'm just trying to get everything. This is kind of the, the final part here where I'm preparing and you know getting ready to start laying some glass out.
I also went over uh, wherever my scarves were. I, I went in ahead and laid and kind of kind of tried to, to flatten those or skim coat those. I don't know the right word that would be, but like wherever my scarves are, that there they were not. They were far from perfect. Let me tell you, but because I had planed them and filled them and kind of sanded them and did a bunch of that stuff, but I just wanted to lay a little more epoxy in there, some of that thickened epoxy, and I knew when I started laying out the glass, I would make sure that was all pushed in tight. So here it is, I've just mixed up some thin epoxy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just coat the bottom here. I was actually hoping this day, when I started this day, I was hoping that I'd get the bottom and the sides glassed, but I'm glad that I stopped and I only put some thin epoxy on the bottom because as you can see here it's you know it's about three o'clock i've been going since a, i think it was 10 o'clock 10 30 or something like that is when i actually started uh that everything just took that much longer uh than i than i expected which you know is, i've never done this so sometimes that just happens and and you know i don't mind working it's just uh sometimes it's hard to plan so you, know, you kind of, once you get to this stage you really want to go ahead and get that glass laid on get it wet out if not you know you're going to have to come back and sand all that out and i talked about before all my reference marks and all when i cut the glass and laid it out and kind of fit it and i really used all those marks so as, as you can see i was rolling that stuff out and that epoxy sticky it helps to make sure that you know where you are and it's just, it, it for me, it's a lot less stressful because I know I can get it back where it is. And so here it is. I'm, I'm kind of working on this back side over here. I think I had a camera problem where, where my one of my cameras shut off, so I, you can't really see what I'm doing. But, it, you know, this working on that edge, that's that overlap back there, and you'll see it later um, when I do a walkthrough. But just getting all that wet out, and, and you'll see I'm mixing really fairly small batches of epoxy. I'm, I think I'm mixing, same thing, like 26 ounces at a time. And this is a different epoxy because it's been so cool. The slow hardener hadn't been kicking. It's been taking, really taking forever, days for it to really set. So I moved up to a medium hardener, and I, I'll, have some, I'll have some effects of that that we'll talk about down the road. Um, that deal with blushing um, because this is this is a pretty cool cool day and uh, you know a lot of wet weather like even at night it was really real humid and whatever but I'm but I'm working in these small batches because I, I you know the stress of that epoxy kicking off is worrying me tremendously I, I even bought a uh, went on Amazon or whatever and got a little epoxy mix or something that they use for tabletop epoxy uh, I forget what the man. If anybody needs to know, just ask, and I'll, I'll let you know. But something just go on the end of a drill, and it helps you mix the thin epoxy. You know, mechanically, there was so much of this to do that really helped. Especially, like I said, I was mixing it in small batches so that if I ever got in a bind, like all this glass on the front up here, I did. You know, it's it's kind of wet. It's stuck, but it's it's not wet out. So I, I could. I feel like I could. You know, I could come back and mitigate that if I had to so I'm trying to work in small batches and keep all of my my epoxy in, you know in an area that I'm working kind of lay it out there I use the scraper to just kind of kind of spread it out and let it soak in and some of these time lapse you can actually see the epoxy flowing downhill so I start at the top and just kind of let it work and, and be patient with it because you just let it soak in you can't push it into the cloth I don't think very well but that scraper helps you to kind of move that stuff and keep it up the hill and then I come back with the roller and then as you'll see I'll, I'll roll where I'm working and I kind of go all the way back to the where I started and I'll roll the whole thing again and then sometimes get that little ridge roller and roll it again you see I'm back at the transom again but I just you know piece by piece by piece and, and then I kind of going always always going back and going behind myself and rolling all that out and <laughs> It's kind of funny in the middle of this, I think somewhere in here, I went through three of these sponge rollers because I had set it down to mix some epoxy and the epoxy kicked off and the, the, the roller actually got hard on me. So I just took it off and threw it away and just kept grabbed another one and just kept moving. That's just kind of part of the consumption. You know, it's just part of, you got to bake that into the cake as you go. But 
overall this first side took me you know I, I don't know how it took me an hour and a half hour and 45 minutes to get this first side or longer but I, I by the time I got done with the second side I felt like I could have you know if I had to do this again I'd have done it in half the time this angle is really good because you can see the little relief cuts I put in the epoch in the in the fiberglass I'm sorry where where it's kind of trying to take that taper of the hull or the bow um, and and so that fiberglass wants to kink up on you when you lay it down so I actually cut basically cut a little wedge out of it so that it would lay flat and then I tried to come back right right before this all this fiberglass and all kicked off and fill those gaps with some thickened epoxy so that it'll it'll make it easier to fare out and all that but here it is like I said I'm just mixing epoxy I don't know I think I used oh almost four gallons of epoxy all day long you know between making the thickened epoxy filling all the voids and then you know because you're talking about three ounces of thin epoxy for every square foot of that 1808 biaxial so that's the estimate that I use it's it you, it may work for you it may be wrong uh, that's just what I use and if that helps somebody so be it um, but uh, you know, I'm a novice. I don't, I, you know, I don't pretend to really know what the heck I'm doing. I'm just trying to share. That's the number that I use. Um, but but like right here, I'm not measuring. And it, there you can see that little mixture, and it does help. And and some of this I, I I've got it on time lapse, and it's really sped up. So you know, I let that stuff mix uh, mix for a good while to make sure that that it mixes really well. You know, there's nothing you can hurt by by mixing it too long. You know, too much especially uh, you know in this application where it's a little cool but I but like I said I was using three ounces of epoxy as an estimate for every square foot and I used almost four gallons on this for you know for a, almost a, by the time you incur that slope and all a 19 foot boat that's almost with the overlap and all that probably eight foot wide I mean somebody can do the calculations if they want to but uh, that's just kind of the estimate because I have been asked that question a couple times. But you know, I just finally, finally kind of got in the groove here. I'd work the front side and then come back over here and work on the overlap and just you know mix some epoxy and try and do one little space at a time because you know it's not so much the work of doing this that that wore me out. It it was the stress of okay when's the epoxy going to kick off when's it going to kick is it, when's it going to kick and i'm going to have a disaster that i'm gonna, you know i'm going to have to come back in here and grind all this stuff off of here and that stress just wore me out i mean it was it was a long day i was committed to do it you know once again it's going to be a good day that's where i started and it was you know i, I don't mind the work i just the stress kind of got to me at the end of the day but you know here it is I know I'm getting down I'm, you know I got one more cup of epoxy I'm gonna make and we're gonna make sure everything's wet out and you know just from a, a perspective like even the first glass that I laid like the glass closest to me it hadn't kicked it hadn't because it's thin in that you know in that just a little sheet of epoxy there in that glass that even that hadn't kicked off yet so I, you know all the stress that I had was for nothing um, so it was a good day all in all well, it took about all dang day, but at least I got the bottom done. Wasn't able to get to the sides. See here, I got a nice little overlap down the middle there. Give me a good wide piece of security. You can tell it's New Year's Eve, all the firecrackers in the background. But all in all, it looks pretty good. I used a ton of epoxy, you'll see. See here when he gets to the front, I'll swing around. See all of it. It's still kind of it'll get clearer like the rest of it. Looks pretty good.